In this, in this study, we're going to develop a thermal model of a solar cooker with thermal energy storage using computational fluid dynamics. So why would we do this? Well, first of all, solar cooking has an advantage over traditional cooking. So in most, especially in developing countries, cooking is done based on firewood, which means that you have a lot of CO2 emissions and you also have a lot of smoke creation, which means that it's not very healthy for the people who need to cook. Solar energy could be an alternative because you avoid the use of firewood and you also use renewable energy to cook. However, there is one big problem because during night or cloudy periods, you don't have enough solar power to bake or to cook your food. And therefore, in this study, we try to implement a thermal energy storage system to overcome these periods where the sunlight is only limited or not available. And to do so, we use computation fluid dynamics because our solar cooker here is designed to be of practical use in developing countries, which means that for a thermal energy system, we use oil, in this case, sunflower oil. And this oil is both used in the thermal energy storage, which is this compartment, and also here in the cooking pot where we use the oil to cook or to bake the food. As oil and air above is a fluid, we use computational fluid dynamics to solve the equations which describe the velocity field V, the density field rho, the pressure field P inside and, and the temperature and the enthalpy here inside this solar cooker. So what is our geometry? We have an axisymmetric geometry, which means that the x-axis here to the left is the symmetry axis. And therefore, we have a cylindrical compartment to cook the food. And we also have an L-shaped cylindrical compartment for the thermal energy system, energy storage system. So based on the equations of motion, we are going to solve the temperature profile and the associate natural convection within the cooker. So to do so, we apply a constant solar flux at the bottom and we see how the temperature inside the profile will change. So first of all, we performed a validation of the experiments where you can see here the temperature in the storage, which is the temperature here in this compartment. And we also have the temperature inside the pot itself, which is the temperature here. And that's actually the oil which is used to cook or to bake the food. So if you see that in time, the predictions of the model in red are within the experimental uncertainty limits. You do have a few fluctuations here or here where the, uh, the temperature in the experiment suddenly drops, but this is associated with solar flux radiations. So the measurements were done in real life conditions, which means that sometimes the solar energy is a little bit lower due to clouds and so on and therefore in the numerics we only applied the time averaged solar flux but nevertheless despite these differences you can see that there is a very good resemblance between the numerical model and the experiments and then we used the numerical model to do a study on the physics of the heat transfer phenomena and this is shown here what you see here is at different time instants. So here at 450 seconds, at 900, at 1800, and at 3600 seconds, the temperature profile within the cooker. So we see initially the cooking pot is quite low in temperature. And you can see here these Rayleigh Bernard convection cells, which are created because the bottom of the cooker is heated up. It reduces the density and the viscosity near the bottom in the oil of the thermal energy storage system. And due to natural convection, hot oil will rise towards the top and it will also heat up the fluid in the cooking pot. You can see that the temperature profile in the thermal energy storage system is quite uniform within time. So this is due to the natural convection, which creates mixing. And therefore, the temperature profile becomes quite uniform. You can see that before 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes, the oil in the pot is quite low in temperature, but then 
after 1800, so 50 minutes later, you can clearly see that the temperature within the pot is also reaching 330 degrees Kelvin. And then eventually, later on, you will see that the temperature in the cooking pot also increases and you have conduction of heat through the top of the cooker by the air, which is the white region here above the cooking oil. If you look at the steady state situation where we have the equilibrium temperature profile, you can see that both the temperature within the cooking pot and in the thermal energy storage systems are quite uniform. And this steady state temperature is reached within four hours. And if you look at the temperature inside the thermal energy storage, it can reach around 410 Kelvin. And in the cooking pot, it reaches a temperature of around 406 Kelvin. So these temperatures are high enough to bake uh, different food items. And therefore, we have proven that our solar cooker is able to cook food within a reasonable time and within a reasonable temperature. The follow-up of this model would be to test it for different fluids in the, both the thermal energy stores and the cooking, because now for the thermal energy system, we used an oil, a vegetable oil, which is available in developing countries, but you could also think about a PCM material, so a phase changing material. So this model could also be used to simulate the impact of that.